I've always wondered, at what point in our lives do we feel like we've truly grown up? Is it when we move out? Or finish school? Get your first job? Become a parent? Because for the longest time, I felt like I was waiting for this one definitive moment where I would step into adulthood, like, <laughs> here it is. But it's not happening. That's what adulting is. But I feel like throughout the years, I have developed some key habits that have made me feel more enriched and embodied. And today I'm gonna share them with you. So let's get started. First up, we've got meditation. And wait, wait, before you click out of this video thinking, oh, I already know I should meditate. I should eat healthy. I should stop using social media. This video is not intended for us to should all over ourselves. They are just tools that we can use depending on how we're feeling to figure out what's gonna help us out in the long run. And meditation has had a profound impact on my life. There is like a common misconception saying that meditation is like clearing your mind, like making sure that your brain is completely rid of thoughts. That is not true. That's like essentially telling like your heart to stop beating or your eyes to stop blinking. Your brain is meant to think. So of course you're gonna have these thoughts. When I'm meditating, I kind of imagine myself sinking back into my mind and watching my thoughts as if they were clouds in the sky. You just sink back and observe. And if I catch myself daydreaming, then I'll be like, oh, I'm daydreaming. And then I'll sink back down and observe my thoughts. And that's pretty much what my sessions look like. For me, like I started to notice that the things that used to bother me don't, or I've noticed that my temper has calmed down, or I noticed that certain things don't overwhelm me like they used to. And practices like these definitely help just mellow me out and ground me during times of just uncertainty. Ever since I've been prioritizing my sleep schedule, I have been performing better, I've been thinking more clearly, and I'm just a better version of myself. Like I like to get at least eight to nine hours every single night, and God, it feels freaking amazing. <laughs> I recently read this book, Why We Sleep by Matt Walker, and it just convinced me to clean up my sleep schedule, I think he does a much better job explaining why sleeping is so essential for us. In essence, when you sleep, your body and your mind repair itself. So if you're not sleeping, you're not giving your body a fair chance to do what it needs to do. And I love sleeping in my bed. I wanna take a quick minute to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. I have been using Brooklinen for the past three years and their bed sheets are my absolute favorite. It's actually my favorite place to shop for luxury bed sheets and high quality home goods. So Ben and I wanted to do a little refresh for our bedroom, so we thought we would do the sheets. We want something a little bit more bold, so we decided to go for this graphite and steel Oxford stripe combination. I got the Lux Hardcore Bundle, and this includes a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, four pillowcases, and a duvet cover. I love that you can mix and match from over 20 colors and patterns and have your bedding fit your personality. Investing in quality bed sheets is like investing in your self-care because you are making bedtime exciting again. And personally, I am so stoked when it's the end of the day and I get to just slip into my delicious Brooklyn and sheets that are just impossibly soft. They get softer with each wash somehow. And I'm definitely not alone in my love for Brooklinen. They have so many five-star reviews. I believe like over a hundred thousand and I attest to this. Honestly, I have the deepest, best sleeps in my Brooklinen sheets. They're so comfy and so slinky. I cannot recommend them enough. And right now they're having their birthday sale, which is their largest sale of the year. Everything is 25% off. So this is the perfect time to try Brooklinen for yourself or stock up on your favorites. I will leave everything in the description box. So please click the link if you're interested. Reading is hands down my most favorite high quality leisure activity. And it's because in one spot, I can travel to all parts of the country. I can even like time travel to different time periods. I can enter the minds of the most brilliant and most hilarious people. And I feel like my love for reading really started the second I graduated from college. I was like, oh wait, I don't need to read anything that anyone assigned me. Like I get to choose what books I wanna read. And that just blew my mind. And I would say like the biggest tip to get you started on reading is just read things that you find fun, addicting. So I remember like for the first couple of years, all I was reading were thrillers and erotica. They were very engaging. 
And then from there, I feel like the genres began to splinter. I started to really dive into nonfictions because like nonfictions are essentially textbooks where I get to explore any topic that I find fascinating or that I want to understand better from like psychedelics to politics to the attention economy. Like it's just, the books are endless. And so they act as building blocks so that I can understand the world better at my own pace. And reading fiction also serves more purpose than simply entertaining. It actually makes you practice empathy because when you're reading a book, you are temporarily in someone else's mind. And even if you find that character insufferable or you don't agree with their life choices, when you're reading, you are forced to look at things through their perspective. So you start to understand why they are the way they are. And when you're reading, you kind of find characters that are similar to the people that you know in your life. And so it makes you empathize with other people in your relationships as well. And I also have a book club if you guys want to join. It's called Curl Up Club, which I'll also leave in the description box. Please join us. Let's talk about stretching. For the longest time, I have not been able to touch my toes. Like it actually was a goal of mine to be able to touch my toes since 2019. There was something that happened last year where I realized that I needed to be more in tune with my body. So I decided to do yoga three times a week. And let me just show you the progress. Look, I can touch my toes, look. I never thought I would be able to do this. Like I. I always knew in theory that my mind and body were connected, but now I really do understand. It's because when I'm stretching, not only am I releasing the rigidity from my physical self, it's actually made my mind a lot more flexible too. When I'm holding these poses, like I could feel my body resisting. I could feel my mind resisting, especially saying like, ah, I don't wanna do this, it's uncomfortable. But holding that pose and breathing through everything has just been a very powerful exercise. I've read somewhere that yoga activates the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's what controls your body to uh, relax and handle stress. And so in that hour of yoga, that's when I'm working out my parasympathetic nervous system. So it's teaching my body to handle stress in a healthy way. And I think it's ultimately like building patience, like teaching my mind like, hey, this sucks and it's uncomfortable, but we're gonna stay here, we're gonna be uncomfortable, and you're not gonna die. So I feel like that's what I'm kind of training my mind to be. Hard work looks different in so many ways. It doesn't mean that I need to sweat or burn a ton of calories. Like, I'm still doing the work, but it looks different. So if anything, it just made me appreciate strength and resilience in all different types of forms. Let's talk about cooking. I think a big adulting flex that I'm proud of is that I'm able to open up a fridge and be able to whip up a meal using the ingredients inside. I've always loved food and eating, but cooking was a skill that took me a minute to cultivate. And it started off by creating like a Rolodex of, of recipes that I just knew by heart. I think as long as you know three, where they're just no brainers. Like you don't need to look at directions or measurements. You can just eyeball everything and assemble it. That is an amazing start. I think what makes cooking daunting is when you don't know how to cook something. Like you're like frantically looking at the instructions and like figuring it out. And it, it's just like, you're not in the zone. But once you have like three recipes that you just know by heart, suddenly it becomes an extremely fun therapeutic experience. You know, you put some music on, a podcast, and you just get into the flow of cooking something from beginning to end. There is something extremely satisfying about it. And at the end, you get a delicious home cooked meal. Sometimes like there's this pressure to always have to make a new recipe and try something new, but I don't think that's necessary. I think just, you, you know, going to your tried and trues are so solid. And I think once you feel comfortable with those and then you're feeling a little frisky and you've got some extra time, then you can add a new recipe. At least that's the mode that I've been going towards. Writing is a very polarizing activity. It's interesting because when you write as if someone is gonna read it, suddenly you can't really write anymore. But if you're writing as if no one's gonna read it except for you, then the freaking pen just flows. That's the type of writer I am. I like to write for my own eyes only. And when you're writing, you're essentially transcribing that voice inside your head. And I think because I have so many thoughts and ideas, 
they all like can slip away if I don't capture them immediately. So writing has really helped me be more responsible and it's helped me with my mental health. It's helped me with adulting especially because this is how I stay on top of things. The second I think I have to do something, I'll just jot it down. Like you should see my reminders app on my phone. I have a list for everything and I feel like this is the best way to have a running log of things that I need to do, things that inspire me, recommendations. There's a lot of like therapeutic factors that writing has done for me. First is the release. There was a moment where I realized a lot of the times my entries were written when I was upset or angry. And I feel like when you are filled with negative emotion, like you wanna do something about it. And instead of doing something irrational, like scream at someone or throw something, when you write, you're transferring that energy onto the paper. I know that writing when you're pissed off can be just a frustrating process because my mind is going like 100 miles an hour, but I hate that my, my hand can't match my thoughts. So it forces me to slow down. And as I'm taking the time out to really figure out like, okay, why am I pissed off? What's bothering me? I can feel my whole body start to calm down because that's what maturity it is. It's about delaying your reaction to things. And so when I write, I know that I'm buying some time for me to cool off. And the, the benefits of this is that I can actually see what exactly is in my head. Because a lot of times when I'm talking, sometimes I just forget what I've said and I just go in circles. When I write, I actually get to see exactly what has been bothering me. I can pinpoint patterns. I can spot things that resonate with me. It's essentially collecting data. And with that data, you can become a better version of yourself. So anyway, all these habits are just reminders to keep your well-being in check. I know adulting is hard, but we're all in it together. And I would love to know what habits help you in the comments down below. I love getting new ideas and maybe we can do like a part two. And lastly, I wanna thank Brooke Lennon for sponsoring today's video. Just a little reminder, they're doing their birthday sale where everything is 25% off from now to May 3rd. Link is in the description box. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.